Hi there, my name is Lars Sorensen and you're watching this video snack we've created for you at the Computing Conference 2019 in London. Uh, we're talking to uh, paper submitters about their work. Hopefully we can inspire you to dive into it and read all about it. We only got a couple of minutes uh, to, to, uh, to tell you a little bit about it here. Uh, we're going to talk to um, a lecturer and PhD student Thomas Butler from the University of Northampton uh, here in the United Kingdom. Kingdom. Um, and your paper title, I always want to read it up loud, uh, a methodology for performing meta-analysis uh, of developers' attitudes towards programming practices. Yes. <laughs> How do you explain that to uh, someone that has no it's clue? It's a very <laughs> long-winded title. Yeah. But effectively, I want to be able to measure whether something is a good way of doing something or a bad way. So like any engineering discipline, there are a hundred ways to solve the same problem. You could give 10 different people a task to build you a model ship and you'll get 10 different ships. Some will be better than others. Some will be able to float, some won't be able to float, some, uh, uh, some will sail, some won't work, and so on. So the way they're built will differ depending on who you ask. And the same is true in programming. However, in programming, we have the luxury of being able to reuse the work we've done on new projects. So we can take bits and pieces of the code we did on the previous project and move it to the next project. Okay. However, in theory, that's, that's good. <laughs> yeah. But in practice, depending on how you code your project initially, you may not be able to take sections from one part and move it to the next thing you're building. The analogy I like to use is, going back to the model ships, you could build a ship in a bottle, or you could build a ship out of Lego. The person who's built the ship out of Lego can easily take it apart and build it back into a house, or a spaceship, or something else. Whereas the person who's built a ship in a bottle can't take uh, that ship in a bottle and convert it into something else very easily, or use the parts on a different project. So um, then this, this methodology, uh, I'm sure that in a couple of minutes just explaining just how it works is hard, but uh, um, just to get a generic uh, idea. So there's lots of different ways you can build software and we're obviously aiming for that Lego ship rather than ship That's in a it. bottle yeah. approach. And there's some subjectivity as to which is the best way to get to that Lego approach rather than the ship in the bottle approach. So I analysed a lot of articles, 200 in total so far, looking at is, uh, uh, effectively asking developers, is this the best way to solve the problem? So I looked at the opinions of 200 different developers and uh, looked at if they had, sorry, that's very well worded, but I looked at the opinion of 200 uh, different articles and looked for trends to see mm -hmm. does people agree that this is the best approach or this is the best approach or this is the best approach and so on to get that modular and, and to get a like more objective opinion to I get, guess. yeah so I set out with the research question is can I show that this is a bad practice yeah because that leads on to my future research and I had to be able to show that that's a really bad way of this doing is this. A, that's a boat a bad, in the bottle yeah that's a boat <laughs> in the, a, a ship in the bottle yeah, yeah. I wanted to be able to prove that and rather than just provide say a couple of references I did a meta-analysis where I looked at a hundred articles about practice and not only did I say that there was three people that say it's a good thing, eight people say it's a bad thing and just do a simple tally, I looked at the academic rigour of those articles. So rather than just looking at the recommendation they made to use or avoid the practice. Which is still subjective in a way. Which is right? somewhat subjective yeah. and it is just a tally. Three people say yes, four people say no, whatever numbers you end up with. I also looked at had they compared the practice to alternatives and had they done much thinking in terms of is this the right tool for the job. So instead of just saying there's three articles that say yes and four articles that say no, for each article I graded them on a score of one to seven based on whether they looked at alternative approaches, compared the alternative approaches to the practice in question, listed the pros and cons of each of the approaches, and then finally made a recommendation based on that. And I weighted those articles higher than the articles that just say, here's how to use this practice. That's it, yeah. And the conclusion was that I could then draw trends and say, all of the people who've done a lot of analysis have come to the same conclusion, you shouldn't use this. And the only people that are saying you should be doing it haven't done as much academic 
analysis of the practice. Which makes that uh, suggestion way more valid, right? Exactly. It's, and so it's, it's more objective. It's more of a consensus than just a, a tally or a poll. That's it. And, and uh, just to, to, to understand from me that you gave the pr presentation already? Or That's correct, yeah, uh, this afternoon. So I'm, I'm curious because it sounds like a very valid way to look at code to see uh, which b bits should we be wanting to, to reuse and which bits are the, the bad practice. Uh, so I'm curious, how the reactions of the other experts here in, in our conference? Yes, positive so far. I've only had a chance to, uh, to talk to a few colleagues here, but overall they were uh, curious and positive on the, in their feedback and, and questions. So if we look at the status of, uh, of this methodology right now, and uh, it's, it's, it's a way to like, uh, be usable, feasible in, in, in uh, a wider perspective? Yeah, it's, it's a stepping stone onto my next piece of research. What I wanted to do initially is I set out to uh, develop a, a, a metric for grading software to say this is an A-grade software, this is a really flexible piece of software, this gets a B, this gets a C. But until, uh, until I've got a way of showing that that really should be something that reduces the grade, that is definitely a bad practice, and if that's in the software, then it should get a lower grade, I couldn't progress onto the next stage of research. So this is kind of the step on before I get to my next stage, which is actually my PhD project. Ah, and building up to almost like the Grammy Awards of software. <laughs> yes. So it will, it will, it will uh, eventually, it would scan a piece of source code and give it a grade, saying this, is, this gets an A, it's got no bad practices, this gets an F, it's full of bad practices, and so on. Sounds very interesting and, and promising. Obviously, we wish you the best of luck with developing that and the next upcoming research. Uh, if you want to know a, a more about that, then uh, surely stay tuned for, for more. Then I'm sure that we'll have uh, a lecturer and PhD student Thomas Butler back again at one of our conferences. Uh, for now, I want to thank you so much for complying with us, with uh, putting all that research uh, into this tiny interview. Uh, maybe it inspired you enough to check out uh, the publication that Springer's uh, made available for all our paper, uh, uh, all the papers that have been uh, uh, admitted um, uh, uh, or, or accepted, I should say. Uh, don't keep this video to yourself. Share it with your friends and your network. Uh, like, share, subscribe to the channel. All everything goes. And please consider joining us for one of our conferences. Check out dates and locations on the website, and I'll see you there.